Welcome to BMW Blog and welcome to the BMW Performance Center to test, actually not test, but really ride in that car because it's the only one in the world and we are not allowed to drive it. But I, we're going to go for a ride with Jens Kalingsmann. He's a professional racing driver and he's going to show us what this car can do. I'm assuming this is the future M3 electric. I'm not sure what they call it, but it's supposedly having over 1500 horsepower and a crazy amount of torque. So we're going to go for some laps. Hopefully I don't throw up. Uh, because apparently it's crazy fast. So let's go for a ride. I need time, just a little more time. I need time. I need time. They provide you with a bag just in case, but yeah. you don't need it. Don't uh, worry. Uh, it's just for, for. I mean, you never know, honestly. Uh -huh. You will notice the only thing which we don't have implemented yet is a cooling system. Gotcha. So this is an exclusive drive, really, or a ride, I guess. Huh? How many horsepower do you think he's got? to 1500 more something like that i yeah. assume but they didn't tell me details. they didn't tell either yeah uh. yeah we just go from here to the track we do three laps there are different modes we start on comfort then we do track and drift because drift offers the most power without tc okay but then we go just from there but you will see because it's a carbon chassis it's very stiff which i like as a race car driver because it's very agile and very pointy and easy to position the car but honestly, at this stage, a limiting factor is the tire because this is a road car tire like an M3. It's a, it's a high it's look too. sport. It's a fine sport. And I think if you yeah. put a slick here once, yeah. it will be a, a different planet. Also, when we go to track, the noise level will increase a bit because the impellers are running up. Okay. So we have five impellers which are generating downforce. And the good thing is, normally with all those race cars, you need to do like 100 miles, whatever, until the, <coughs> sorry, until the downforce kicks in. And with them, you can already achieve like 1.2 tons of downforce static. So even the low speed corner, you have all the downforce available. So let's see what you can do. <laughs> let's just start slowly. What do you think this one is? This one is this motor also the least power. Gotcha. Least power, huh? Just to get a feel for the car. Because now you can already see how, how well it follows. Yeah. Drive input. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like a, there's a lot of platform stability. The change of direction is really nice. Yeah. yeah. Other end, 180 kilometers per hour braking. Even like here, as you can put a long load corner. Yeah. We're it's going fast, but it's so far. Yes. Yeah, so, oh my god, yeah. It's because it offers so much, so much grip. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it. Not at all. So this is done. Low power mode. Yeah, this is low power. We just want to crank it up and then to track. Damn. Oh my god. Are you better? Yeah. Wow. Now the impellers they will run up, so the noise level will be a bit more intense. Generating more downforce. Wow. The tire is not so good. Yeah, it's anyway. a little bit of grief, yeah, lost there. It's nice how it rotates around its axle, it's crazy. Over 100 kilometers, turning 360 pretty much. <laughs> now in a second. Okay. Switch to the flag. This is the drift mode. So drift mode. Now, now, now it's my favorite mode. Okay. Because now the power is really instantly available. So you now you're getting a full power basically. You will see. Gotcha. Oh my god. 
Since and I'm just the tapping the pedal in there. Oh yeah, you're, you're right, you're barely touching that panel. Whoa! Ridiculous. It went to, bad, yeah, it went to one, 140 in like a second. But the crazy part is when you like, for example, that's 250 yeah. or something, and yeah. then you go from like a part throttle yeah. to full throttle. Yeah, so from 60. 60 to 100 in like 0.7 seconds, probably ridiculous. And if you take this power plus the downforce, plus yeah. stick tires and so on, with the region, I think yeah. it's a difference. You can adjust the right height too, I see. Yeah, yeah this is static now, but yeah. you can adjust it too. And now it's my second favorite part of the drive. Okay. Because now it's a U turn. Okay. So we add a little bit of a drift at the end. Okay. Let's do a little bit. All right. Ready? Ready. Damn. Go a bit in reverse, so they like the positioning of the car better. You can do a J turn on this one easily. Yeah. Yeah, like wild. <laughs> this is why they give us this, just in case you're wondering. It might be Good. needed actually. If you do more than four laps, you do definitely need this one. So? Feel dunk, yes. This was awesome. Not Thank so you. bad, eh? So, Fantastic. first exclusive riding in the whatever this we car just, is. We're just scratching, you know. I mean, scratching the surface. Yeah. Likely Sorry. over 13, 1400 horsepower. And I think, yes, yeah, so. barely, barely push the car too. Yeah, just to get a read, you know, a first impression of uh, the yeah. car. I hope you enjoy this, guys. Fortunately, you can't really see in the video how wild this is, but this is amazing. Honestly, my stomach after three laps, it's done. It is absolutely wild. So, see you soon. So, you might be wondering, what's that heart doing behind me? Well, that's the heart of joy. And the reason why I'm here today in this secret facility with BMW is to show you a world exclusive car and something fantastic looking. And you have it right here. There is no name for this car. I've been trying to get a name for this car. I've been trying to figure out what's this car, when is it coming, what is it going to be. I was only told that this is a test bed for Neue Classic technology and especially for the heart of joy. So what's the heart of joy? Is this super duper computer that's going to be used in this car to control all the car functions, to make sure there is no latency between the drivetrain, the motors, and all of that. And then, of course, everything has to fit into this small package, and that's the heart of joy. They haven't told me exactly how much power, but you can imagine anywhere from maybe 1300 and up. Now, design-wise, of course, it's got a lot of Neue Classic design features. We've seen it in the Vision Neue Classic concept cars, especially on the sedan one. And you can see this new digital design as BMW calls it. They replace the iconic BMW Kinegula with these lights. And I'm almost positive it's exactly what we see on a production series car, especially when it comes to an i3. Of course, this is a car that's meant to exaggerate the design, to show the racing aspect of Neue Classic as well, not just the efficiency and electric range. And that's why you have this really massive racing front bumper. I mean, you can see it. It's, it's a car that's meant to be on the track, not on the road right now. Of course, you have this upwards fins right there. They always use this duality to kind of match with the headlights as well and also the duality for M design. So I'm assuming this is a preview of an M car at some point. Of course, a little bit more toned down when it comes to production series car. You can also see that, I mean, the rondel is not there, but it's supposed to be etched into the body of the car to eliminate parts to be more sustainable in many, many ways. It's a lightweight car. I mean, they want to emphasize that this is, you know, a performance car. So, of course, it's missing a lot of things on the inside. We're going to take a look at that in a second as well. And, of course, it's probably all carbon fiber underneath here. We're going to open it up and take a look at that too. You can also see this massive air intake right there, air cooling vent, whatever you want to call it. And of course you need that because the performance of this car, it's mind blowing from what I'm being told. Now let's move to the side. Of course, it's all camouflage. You can't really see much, but at least you can see this. I mean, look at these front fenders. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, you can see the width of it. Absolutely, absolutely stunning from all angles. And of course it needs that because it rides on 325 by 30, 21 inches wheels and tires. So it needs to cover those tires quite nicely. On the same note, if you continue around that line, you will see the rocker panel on the bottom also exaggerated, something that you would expect to see in a racing type of car. And then of course you have this line right there that's also supposed to break down the height of the car to bring it lower to the ground. 
Even with the camouflage, you can tell exactly what this car is supposed to do on the road and on the track. Of course, BMW is using some new style of mirrors right there with this new design interpretation. So that's pretty, pretty cool. To give you a side view of the car, I mean, you can see the proportions of the new class sedan that we've seen. Three box design. Of course, they want to pay homage also to historical like E30 type of cars, but also bring in some of the new digital features and the new digital design and all these new updates the new class is supposed to bring to market. The roof line, I don't think it's changed much from the concept line. You can see it right there, it's still got the Hofmeister King interpretation right there. I'm assuming this is the e-ink technology, so you can customize that. It's not functional right now, but you have an idea what it could look like. And speaking of the Hofmeister King, I guess the way to open the rear door is from right here. Yep, so that's a functional piece. It's like a Hofmeister King with a functional door handle opener. Pretty, pretty cool, actually. If you close it, the window goes up. So that's the way to open the rear door. And you can see how far back it's being pushed. So it's quite easy to get in and out, even if you're tall. Of course, once again, we're talking about a prototype, very early concept car or prototype car. So not something that we might see on production in this particular shape or exaggeration. Now let's go to the back, but you can see also the same taillights that we've seen on the Neue Vision Classe. So once again, this duality right there, using light to show this, to extend actually the, the width of the car, starting with those two lights right there, multiple LEDs inside on both sides. And once again, it's supposed to be a BMW logo right there etched in. There's some huge holes in here. I can see through them and probably because you need to cool down that battery and the brakes and everything else. And of course, for aerodynamic purposes and downforce and everything else, very, very cool looking, especially when you see it on the track. Speaking of more exaggerated design elements, I mean, look at that diffuser. I don't even know what to make of it. It is fantastic. Definitely gives you like those CSL old school vibes. You need that downforce. I was told that you definitely need the downforce in this car because it is ridiculous fast, especially in straight line. And you can see how they've done the split diffuser right there. There is another splitter on the bottom, everything done to help with the downforce of the car. This exaggerated spoiler right here and what it looks like because when you see it from the side, it looks absolutely fantastic. As you can see, it's got the new door handle that we've seen on the Neue Classic Vision Concepts. So if you pull there, we'll open the door. And once again, you can see actually a steering wheel that looks pretty close to what we've seen in the concept car. So you got that spoke at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So that's new. And I'm assuming that's going to stay in production. Of course, materials and all of that will change quite a bit. Other than that, once again, from this side, you can see the carbon bucket seats made for racing because we're going to go on the track and we need those. Pre-production, nothing that you will see in the production series car. This is meant to be for testing. And that's why you see all these buttons in there and everything else. But the one thing that's actually a production series thing, and I just found out recently, it's the panoramic vision. So if you look at the windshield, you will see that's actually a production series screen. So that is exactly what you will see in your classic cars. Anything else, just really for testing purposes. There is really limited materials inside to make sure that the car is lightweight and all of it. And if we move to the back, once again, you even have a roll cage in here, kind of like a roll cage type of thing. I'm assuming uh, they're testing this car at super high speed, so they need to be safe. You can see the six-point harnesses in the back as well. And you have this very cool bucket seats in the rear. I kind of wish this, these are production ready, but I'm not sure they're going to be. More carbon fiber, of course. And then you can see these side skirts right there, massive, especially with the door open. It's still a very early pre-production car. It's not no near close to be ready. I just kind of wanted to give you a quick look to see what it looks like. Plenty of carbon fiber, of course. It's a lightweight car. I don't know if that's going to be in the final production or not. And this is not even a production series car. It's just a test bed for the new heart of joy, as BMW calls it, the supercomputer they have. And then of course, to show the driving dynamics on four wheels. So without any further ado, let's go for a ride.
Dieses Fahrzeug zeigt die Erfahrung aus 100 Jahren Fahrdynamikentwicklung. Wenn man sich die Zahlen vor Augen führt, in den zwölf Monaten in 75.000 Stunden ein Fahrzeug aufzubauen, was am Ende fast 18.000 Newtonmeter auf die Straße bringt, ist für mich das Verrückteste mit Abstand, was ich bis jetzt erlebt habe. Dieses Fahrzeug ist die Ultimate Driving Machine im übernächsten Level. Der VDX, das ist für uns der ich nenne es mal den Challenger. Ja, der challenged unser Superbrain, unser Heart of Joy. Ja, und die Logik darin, die in-house entwickelt wurde, ja, die BMW Dynamic Performance Control, zum absoluten Limit. Wenn es in diesem Auto funktioniert, wo wir die Limits der Physik quasi verschieben, dann funktioniert es auch draußen in der Serie in der neuen Klasse. Die Aufgabe bei dem Fahrzeug war ja, vollkommen neue Wege zu beschreiten, was physikalische Grenzen angeht. Und dazu mussten wir uns da entscheiden, eine aktive Aerodynamik in dieses Fahrzeug einzubauen und können einen zusätzlichen Anpressdruck von über 1200 Kilo darstellen durch diese aktive Aerodynamik. Und das erlaubt uns halt, Querkräfte von über 3G in diesem Fahrzeug aufzubauen. Und das sind komplett andere Dimensionen, die man eigentlich so aus einem Pkw nicht gewohnt ist. Was wir erstmalig machen, das ist Antrieb und Bremsfunktionen zusammenzubringen. Das heißt, Bremseneingriffe müssen später kommen. Wir haben geringe Latenzen zwischen Antrieb und Bremse. So ist das gesamte Fahrerlebnis, das geht Hand in Hand. Das ist seamless. Die Übergaben zwischen diesen Inhouse entwickelten Regler, die sind so weich und rund, dass der, der Kunde es gar nicht spürt. Der spürt ein neues Fahrerlebnis, das Auto folgt ihm und gleichzeitig ist er effizient unterwegs. Mit dem Heart of Joy und der BMW Dynamic Performance Control schaffen wir es, bis in den Stillstand zu rekuperieren. Und das auf so eine ganz smoothen Art und Weise, dass wir es als den komfortabelsten Anhaltevorgang seit Erfindung des Rades bezeichnen. Am Anfang hat die Vorsicht überwogen an den ersten Testtagen, ob alles so funktioniert, wie man sich das ausgedacht hat. Man hat akribisch die Daten analysiert, ob das Fahrzeug genau das macht, was man sich vorher auf dem weißen Blatt Papier ausgedacht hat. Weil wir extrem viele neue Wege beschritten sind, waren da auch viele Unbekannte dabei. Und nach den ersten drei, vier, fünf Testtagen dann zu sehen, es funktioniert alles, das Zusammenspiel klappt, das Fahrzeug ist in der Lage, genau das abzuliefern, wofür wir es designt haben, erfüllt einen dann am Ende halt auch mit Stolz. Dieses Fahrzeug ist ein Prototyp, ein test -Rig. und es ist der neuen Klasse sehr ähnlich. Und Sie können sicher sein, Sie werden die Funktionen, die wir mit diesem Fahrzeug entwickeln, zukünftig in allen elektrischen Fahrzeugen der neuen Klasse wiederfinden. Die Kraft von diesem Auto, die uns alle gepackt hat, ist an der Stelle tatsächlich unbeschreiblich. Jeder, der dieses Auto einmal gefahren ist, in dem steckt ein Heart of Joy. Das Heart of Joy und die BMW Dynamic Performance Control sorgen für noch nie dagewesene Souveränität, Leichtigkeit und Präzision. 